Hey guys, what's up? Um, well, I had planned to do some flying. However, today it's doing nothing but rain, and it's been doing that on and off for about a week and a half. So I really haven't flown since the last time, which was a real estate shoot. And all the work that I do for realtors is photographs. So I thought I would talk about the photographic side of the CG03 Plus. And um, in particular, hey, Sandhill Crane. The work I do for realtors is all photographs at this time, and so I thought I would talk about the photographic side of the CG03 Plus, in particular, how to get the most out of it. Um, now we all know if you're in video mode, it'll take a picture, but that picture is 2160 by 3840, which is the same size as a 4K frame. It's about 8.3 megapixels. It's not that big, and it's not that good. So to get the most out of it, you've got to be in photo mode. Now, if you take a picture in photo mode, that is 3,000 by 4,000 or 12 megapixels. But if you take that as a JPEG, whether it's in natural, gorgeous, or raw, it's still a compressed JPEG. All the data that's lost in the shadows and punched out in the highlights is gone forever. It, you can't recover it. To get the most out of the CG03 Plus photographically, you need to be in photo mode and you need to shoot DNGs plus JPEGs. Now this last shoot I did, I did just that, and I've got some pictures I'll show you that uh, really challenge this camera's capabilities, if not my capabilities as well. Um, but I can show you the true difference between a DNG and a JPEG, so stick around. We're going to take a look at that here in just a minute. To open a raw DNG file, we will need first to convert it. And while the Adobe DNG Converter is a free download, you will need an Adobe product such as Photoshop, Lightroom, or even Elements to work with these files, as DNG or Digital Negative is Adobe's proprietary version of the raw file format. In this video example, I'll be using Adobe's Photoshop. Now you'll notice I have set up three folders one for the raw DNG, a second for the processed DNG, and then a third folder will receive the final image, which I'm going to output as a PNG. Once we have converted the raw file, we can navigate to the processed DNG, then double-clicking it will open the file in a Photoshop panel. Now, as you can see, this image has some overexposed areas and in general looks pretty flat. There is also some CA or chromatic aberration in the trees, and of course the image has no sharpening applied. And let's face it, this is a pretty bad picture, so let's see what we can do to fix it. For now, the areas I want to concentrate on are the overexposure and the chromatic aberration. We will get to the rest in a bit. On the right, this first tab is basic control for white balance, light, and color. And then the other tabs are for tone curves, detail, hue saturation and luminance, split toning, and then we have the lens distortion panel, which we will be using. But let's get back to the basic tab and see if we can rescue this image. One thing the realtor specifically asked me to do was to get this close-in shot of the entryway that had just been landscaped. So if I exposed properly for the house, the entry would be dark. And if I exposed for the entry, the roof would get blown completely out. And as you can see, I chose the latter. So let's see if we can use the lighting controls to get that detail back out of the overexposed areas of the image. And voila! This is why we shoot DNG. So the detail was captured and is now clearly visible, but of course we have now underexposed portions of our image, but hey, the roof looks good, right? So what if we could just bring the light up in the shadows, you know, just recovered a little bit? Well, yes, we can. And with a little tweaking here and there, we can get this image looking pretty good in terms of exposure. And you'll notice, I've done nothing with the color yet, but look at how it is starting to pop. So with that out of the way, now I want to address the chromatic aberration up in the trees, especially this big purple line right over here. So by going into the lens correction tab, we can add a little yellow to the blue fringe, just right until it starts to turn to yellow right there. Then we are going to pull down the red just a bit until the shadows have a good balance. 
right about there. All right, that looks pretty good overall. Now, this is an image we can work with, so I'm going to go ahead and open it in Photoshop by clicking Open Image right here at the bottom of the panel. There we go. Now, I already brought in the JPEG just so we can see where the differences lie. And this is an unaltered JPEG shot on Gorgeous. So here we have the DNG and JPEG. Again, DNG, JPEG. Now, in all fairness to the JPEG, let's see if we can salvage its overblown portions. And the fact is, well, and I, listen, I'm just going to cut to the chase. The answer is that there is no extra data to be recovered in a JPEG. So for now, we will keep working with the DNG. Now this image looks pretty good in terms of color, although I'm going to go ahead and give it that better homes and gardens look that the realtors like to see these days. And to be honest, the colors on that day were impressive. The trees had a glint of this almost fluorescent yellow at the top as the sun poured through, the greens popped, and this freshly laid tree bark, which I am, it was almost orange, had this warm brown orangish feel to it. So I'm just going to give these areas a little punch right here. looking pretty good so far let's uh let's look at it full size a minute here and yeah that looks good good so far and when we go back and compare it with the jpeg we can begin to see where the dng is pulling ahead in terms of image quality all right so before we proceed to sharpen let's convert the image layer into a smart object by clicking on the layer panel and selecting that and then for sharpening, I like to use Smart Sharpen due to the amount of control it gives. And the values used here are just a starting point that I can always change later because we have converted the layer to a smart object. Now, one thing about adding a sharpening filter is that it applies to the entire image, which is not always the optimal route. But for now, let's just go ahead and say, OK. So the next step is I want to change the transfer mode of the effect to luminosity. So when we do sharpen, we don't get any of those weird color artifacting things. So let's click on this and select luminosity. And I want to bring the opacity of this down to 85 and say, OK. Now, since I don't want to sharpen the entire image, just the house and foreground elements, we're going to use the filter as a mask by converting it to black. This will essentially turn it off. And this will also allow me to use the brush tool to selectively apply the sharpening to the image. Now the screen capture that I'm using that is allowing me to film this and you, while you see me work did not pick up the brush circle, so you'll have to look closely to see the image taking shape. Look at the red plants under the window and then across the front door then up the plants next to the tree here. You see this? And as I come across the ferns at the bottom, then up to the roof and moving across the roof, everywhere I'm brushing the image, the sharpening is being applied. Now here, if you look at the skinny tree on the right, you can see the effect taking place and you actually can probably see that little cursor there um, as I brush over the trees, then here in the middle. And applying this effect in this way, we can give a sense of depth to the image that adds a dramatic look and feel that you just can't get out of a flat, over-sharpened JPEG. All right, I'm going to work on getting the final bits done here. And then when we come back, we'll take a look at the final DNG side-by-side -side with the JPEG and get a better sense of the difference. Now, the only way you can see these full images in this video is like this, reduced down to about 30%. But I have stacked the JPEG so that you can see it in the same view at all scales. So here's the JPEG and the DNG. A little bigger JPEG and DNG. And even when we go to 100% and you can only see a portion of the image, the difference is clear, if not striking. Now, I can not only show the JPEG and the DNG differences, but we can also see how using the selective sharpening really brings depth to the image by turning the sharpening off and on. And the color representation from the DNG is just so much better. And even though I suggested I was really going to exaggerate the colors, uh, this is pretty much how they looked on that day.
but all you gotta do to see it in context is just add in some text and graphics that are even brighter and more saturated, and then the image looks just about right. Sorry guys, I just couldn't resist this. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's my JPEG to DNG um, comparison. So um, if you're really out there taking pictures and you wanna get the most out of this camera, this is the way to do it. Hey guys, well that's a wrap for this video. Um, I really want to thank you guys for watching and thank you for subscribing. And always, if you have any questions or suggestions, just uh, put them in the comments below and I'll always read those things. Um, I've got good weather coming in a few days, so I should be back out and flying. I've made a list of all kinds of topics I want to get to. Um, I've got some more gear stuff to show, so a whole lot more is coming and in the works. So until then, we'll see you in the next one. Take care.